We're live. Now, do I need to pin a comment if I already have a title? That's a good question with IG these days. You tell me. I also need to stop drinking Bang Energy. I'm addicted to Bang Energy. My name's Kevin, and I'm addicted to Bang Energy. Um, let me see if this light makes me look any prettier. Hold on. Does it do anything? It does nothing. All right, forget the light. Anyways, welcome to a very special IG Live. Uh, we used to do this, and now we're getting back to it. Where we have special guests join us for the big reveal of the uh, top requested artist. And today's guest is uh, the lead singer of Goody Bag. Great band. Just passed 1 million streams on one of their songs. We'll talk about that. Uh, you might know her brother. Uh, Lindsay Urea is the guest. Who I've been told is in school right now. Not like right now, right now, but we're sort of getting in the way of some schoolwork and probably band practice at that. And then uh, in addition to Lindsay stopping by, we're going to get to your uh, top requested artists over the past seven days from TV. I want to get that out of the way um, so we can get uh, as much time with Lindsay. But the way that uh, this worked basically is that we, uh, we posted a story. I posted a story. Uh, so did Lindsay, actually. And uh, we said, hey, send us some questions that you might have for her. And uh, you did from all around the world. I, I didn't realize how many uh, fan accounts Lindsay has. She's very popular. And uh, we're going to get to all of those or as many as we can before uh, about 2.30 Eastern time. So let's get right into your top request that I see uh, Brazil's in the house. If you want to let us know uh, where you're watching from, please do so. Um, all right. Let's get into this. Let's get into the top requested for the past seven days. All right. No surprise for starters. Dimash has made top requested. Uh, I'll let the cat out of the bag right now. Huge news. I'll tweet it out, but you're getting it first here. Uh, a major debut you've been waiting for. Sexy Zone is on the show this week. It's happening. We're playing the video. We have the video. We'll show you the video and all of the uh, Sexy Zone fans. who well, I can't imagine what their fandom name is. Well, the, the band's name is Sexy Zone, but... Uh, We'll play that video, and I'm sure you're gonna be very excited. Also, let me know if you can hear me all right, because I got my uh, my phone on my computer, and I just want to make sure that everything's coming in clear, basically. Um, all right, what else do we have? SB19, no surprise, huge band on the show. They're gonna look to go for uh, most requested for like the zillionth week. It feels like ever since like last Labor Day, they've been the kings of this show. Uh, Taylor Swift has made top requested. Of course, big news with Taylor today. Uh, she's doing the Taylor's version of a lot of her classic songs, re-recording them, and uh, that's a well-documented story. I'm sure you know about. She's dropping. Uh, I was told today, Fearless re-recorded Taylor's version on uh, April 9th and then Love Story dropped today. So she has made Top Requested a very contemporary Top Requested artist. Also, Why Don't We continues their longest streak. That's amazing to see. Congratulations to Why Don't We guys. Who else? I mean, you guys know CNCO stopping by, Jaden stopping by, Ian Dior, Tyler Posey, Femme, Carly Hansen, uh, Haley Kiyoko, um... Fouché is going to perform for us and call in, which is like super rad. We're super excited about that. And we have an announcement on a future Fouché performance. It's a loaded show today. I hope you uh, tune in. Again, the show starts at 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's exactly three hours from right now uh, on MTV's YouTube, youtube.com slash MTV. All right, more top requested artists over the past week. We have Stones in the mix. Congratulations to Stones and Team Stones, and I hope everyone's doing well on that team. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly. Very nice to see that he's also got some Valentine's Day merch on his website that uh, if you're not over 18, I do not encourage you to partake in, but there's some interesting items there on MGK.com. Uh, Fouché, I told you about. Who else? Selena Gomez. I'm going to try to say this name right. Raul Alejandro. Great artist. I actually am a fan of his music. I just butcher everybody's name. Uh, Arashi. Uh, your Push Radar artist this week is Pale Ways. We're very excited to bring you uh, the latest from Pale Ways. Fantastic new album out today called Who Am I? Uh, really, really great band. I encourage you to check out the song Easy. Uh, and if you like uh, if you like Lindsay's band, not the exact same thing, but kind of in the same universe as uh, Pale Ways, so you probably dig them. Uh, Darren Espanto is back on the show. Congratulations to Darren. Ariana Grande just dropped the uh, music video for 34 plus 35, the remix. It's sort of like a slumber party vibe with her, Meg, and Doja, which is cool if you've checked that out. Uh, she has made Top Requested once again on our Valentine's Day special today. Uh, Jonas Brothers. Haven't heard that name in a minute, but uh, we had some votes for them over on Instagram, so they're on the show. 
Haley Kyoko is calling in. I mentioned that. We're actually, we're actually doing a giveaway with Haley. So if you're uh, looking for that perfect Valentine's Day gift and don't mind uh, offering it a bit belated, uh, Haley has this really cool gender-inclusive fragrance that anybody on earth can wear. And that's what's one of the coolest things about it. It also smells fantastic. She's going to be giving that away and talking to us about the, uh, the fragrance. And she's also going to be uh, giving love advice live. So we're gonna take your phone calls on the show today and Haley is just gonna be like hanging out and you're gonna tell us whatever you're going through uh, love-wise. And then, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna weigh in, what do I know? But uh, Haley is uh, an expert in love and she'll be helping you guys out. Uh, Unity is also on the show. Top requested, I should say. They're not guests, they're top requested. We're gonna reveal uh, who won your YouTube poll uh, this week and you can still vote on that actually right now, youtube.com slash MTV. And uh, there's a bunch of great options. Olivia O'Brien has a song up there, which is cool because she was just on the show. Um, so we'll reveal what that is. Little Mix, boom. Snowman, top requested. Who else? CNCO, top requested. Uh, we we have actually have a very special announcement from uh, Quinn ninety two, who's a fantastic artist. And I'm gonna guess that Lindsay's a fan of Quinn ninety two. Maybe I'll lead with that, Lindsay. If you're here right now, I get the vibe that you you appreciate Quinn ninety two's music. Just listening to your music, but maybe Lindsay will get on here and go, I don't even know who you're talking about, bro. Uh, but Quinn ninety two is gonna be on the show giving you a special message. They don't even tell me what these special messages are. That's how exclusive they are. So you find out when I find out. Um, we have, who else on the show? Harry Styles, everyone loves Harry. Can't get enough Harry. Uh, BTS is top requested. Oh, this is a very interesting artist. Teeny is top requested. Um, who is, and then why it's so interesting is Teeny's fan base has been growing, or at least uh, her existing fan base has become more aware of the show. And uh, just each week, there seems to be more and more requests for Teeny. So maybe she'll get into the top requested race or most requested race, I should say, somewhat soon. We also have, had, have a tease is top requested and Morissette is top requested. So cheers, everybody. My bang energy addiction is in full effect. They're just so delicious. I don't know if you drink bang energy. They're just, it's not even a sponsored uh, deal. It's just delicious. I'm addicted to them. Um, all right. So there you have it. The big show goes down at 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's three hours from right now on youtube.com slash MTV. I would love for you all to be there. Without further ado, though, we have to get to our guest, Lindsay Urea. Now, a lot of you are here for Lindsay, of course, and I'm glad that Lindsay's fan base showed up in, in such uh, passionate numbers. And uh, this is just a great example of you guys turning me on to new music because I wasn't familiar with Lindsay's music, and then you made me familiar with Lindsay's music, and you kept getting louder about doing an interview. And so we hit Lindsay up and she was so cool and like immediately said yes to it. And she's got a very busy schedule. A lot of things balancing in her life right now. Uh, so we're very grateful that you would take the time. Uh, so basically we asked you guys for questions and uh, you sent in a bunch of questions. And then I have a few questions, if you don't mind for Lindsay, because I do like her music and her band's music therefore. Uh, so we'll just chat and we'll hang out. It'll be a nice IG live. Are you guys ready? Can you hear me? I want to make sure audio is good. We can't mess this up. Greetings back to Italy from New Jersey. Hello, Italy. Sounds great. Sophia, I just hired you. You are our sound engineer from now on, on all the Instagram lives, no, no, no matter when. All right, so let me see if I still remember how to do this. Let's get Lindsay on. Lindsay, where are you? I just saw you in here. Oh my gosh, Lindsay, don't bail. Lindsay, where'd you go? Oh, see all. Now, why would you do that to me, Instagram? Making me making me think that Lindsay. This is just at lunch. This is my drum roll. I like having my hands free to give drum rolls to our guests. Hi. What's going on? Not much. How are you? This is a fire. I'm great. This is a fire fit. Thank I love, you. I love like the the vibe. This is like a very unique vibe. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, are you calling us from, I guess, Nashville? Do you live in Nashville, someone told me? Yes, I do. I am currently in Nashville, uh, finishing up my degree at Belmont University. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's a, that's a great school to go to if you love music, right? Totally, yeah. They have a great program in music business. Um, I'm an entertainment industry student. So, yeah, I love it there. It's been awesome. That's awesome. And what year are you there? I'm a senior, and I'm in my final semester, so... 
almost done. We're on like the, the home stretch right now. What's the, like the first thing you want to do when you graduate? Are you thinking about a job? You just want to like pour yourself into the music? Like where's your head at? Cause that's a crazy time in anybody's life. Like right before graduation. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm definitely kind of treating these next few months as my like, like, I just really want to get things going right now, just so that there's no awkward in between. Like, I'm just going straight into what I want to do. So just networking in town, trying to figure out, um, you know, like a pub deal or just yeah. get some representation. So that's kind of been what I've been doing recently, just working as hard as I can. It's, uh, it's, it's evolved in such a cool town because you, a lot of people probably still, right, they think uh, Nashville, they think country. Maybe think songwriters, but there's so many people from the pop world to, uh, you know, even some rock rock bands are down there now. It's, it's a very eclectic town it's turned into. Totally. And it's crazy. Just in my four years here, I've seen it boom and all types of sounds. And I mean, my band, we met here and we're so different than the typical country scene. But every day this town's getting a little more uh, diverse in their genre. So it's really cool to be a part of that. Definitely. Well, let's talk about Goodie Bag, your band, and uh, you're, you're, of course, the lead singer of it. You guys met through school? Because I think you all go to school together, right? Yeah, so we all met at Belmont. Um, I initially met Connor, our lead guitarist, and really weird. We met through a mutual friend. He asked me to come over to color and listen to Hiatus Coyote on vinyl, and Connor was there, and he had his guitar, and we kind of started writing really organically. Um, the Lonely Postman, actually, which was our second single. But at that time, we didn't even, Goodie Bag wasn't even a thing. But we just right. wrote this song, and we we're like, okay. And then a year later, I got a text from him, and he said, I don't know if you remember me. We wrote that song that one time, but we're looking for a lead singer. And I said, uh, all right, I guess I'll give it a shot. Um, and at that time, I had no intention of being in a band, doing music. I was all business. And then I showed up to that first rehearsal and I heard them play and I was like, ah, I got to do this. <laughs> and you, the bug just got you right then? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what, there was a solid year between when you met Connor and then when he asked you to be a part of the band. Yeah. What, so were you doing anything musically, um, you know, outside of your studies during that year? Yeah, so I've been, songwriting's always been where my heart is. And um, Noah and I actually, we've been writing for, since we were kids, but I wrote for Chump Change, his um, OG band, and I was getting into writing for other people, but um, that's kind of what I did with, within that year. So I was just, I was, you know, I always was, I came to Belmont thinking, oh, I'm gonna be a businesswoman, I'm gonna be a music manager. And then the world just kept bringing me back to music. Like right. I just kept getting these opportunities and they're too good to pass up. So finally one day I said, you know what? Maybe this is meant to be. I just gotta keep rolling with it because it keeps calling me, I guess. <laughs> right. First keep pulling you this way, like Lindsay, let's go. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to congratulate you on a million streams on the uh, Strawberry Shortcake song. Thank you so much. That's gotta be like trippy, right? When you like make it, make anything and then you go, wow, a million people have streamed this. So this is wild. I actually remember me and Connor having a conversation when we first put it out. Cause it was our first single, first thing we've ever put out as a band. And he said something like, we'll be lucky if it even hits like 10,000 streams. And I was like, I know you're right. It's our first single, like, let's not get our hopes up. And then like a weekend, we, we see it hit 50,000 streams and we were like, <gasps> like, what do we do with this? <laughs> so it was really cool. And it, I, so grateful for all the support that single has gotten and it, it really gave me confidence to keep doing music yeah it's really amazing congratulations the um i wanted to ask you about the origin name of the band I, i'm like such a sucker for band name origins because like sometimes it can be like so flippant and you know you don't even think about it and you're like oh my gosh this is what we're known as now but how did goodie bag how did you guys land on that so the first few months of being a band we would just uh work on music in Charlie's basement, our drummer. And at the end of rehearsal every night, we would just sit in a circle and just throw out names. And we just random stuff, like none of it made sense. And then I don't remember who, but someone was like, goodie bag. And then we all kind of sat there and we're like, that makes sense. Cause all of us are very different in our, the ongoing joke is when we play shows, none of our outfits match. And we just look <laughs> like there's no like theme. And we're, wor we're literally working on that, like trying to find our vibe because we're just all so different. Right. Um, 
but yeah, it just, we, it's felt right. It sounded right. And I feel like that's kind of how we are. We're all different. And it's like, you're pulling treats out of a goodie bag and you don't know what you're going to get. So I don't know. It just kind of stuck. And then we yeah. had a show coming up. So we were like, Oh, we just need a name. Let's do that. So I don't know. <laughs> and who doesn't love a goodie bag. You know what I mean? Like everyone loves a goodie bag. Um, <laughs> you're talking about how different everyone is in a band, like the, uh, you know, the eclecticness of the inspirations and what you guys pull from, whether it's what you wear or the music you like. And Gwen Stefani and like Stevie Nicks are both it's huge inspirations for you. Why so? Gwen Stefani grew up in Orange County and that's where I grew up. Um, so I kind of feel like a connection to her in a weird way. Um, she started out playing backyard shows and, and basement shows. And that's kind of how I started out. So I don't know. And she's, she was a front woman of an all guy band. So I just feel like I get her on a, on a level. Oh, totally. and, yeah. And Stevie Nicks, she has been, I've been listening to her music since I was a kid. So I just, I just actually read a book like her biography and, I just always admired her and her style and her sound and how she really knows who she is and the type of music she wanted to make. So, yeah. And it's cool to see, uh, you know, a new generation learn about her and Fleetwood through, you know, the dog face 420 guy. With totally. The that, I was like, I've been listening to this for a year. So I'm glad that everyone's <laughs> kept jumping on this wave. <laughs> like I've been here. Um, <laughs> So let's get to some of these fan questions because uh, some of them were really creative and, and uh, you have very passionate fans from around the world. Um, the first one uh, comes from, I still have some of these people stunned in my life. Some of these were my questions. Um, here's a good one. Lindsay Uria Daly, what was the inspiration behind your song, Strawberry Shortcake? Um, so, I mean, it wasn't really about one guy it was just in general that feeling of you don't really know your place without that person and you're trying to navigate how do I exist in these spaces without him by my side and I don't want him by my side because he screwed me over but I also miss him and I still love him but I hope he gets what he deserves I guess like so that's, like, a, that's such a nuanced idea you know like <laughs> Tough enough to write about just love, you know, it's, it's to sort of capture that. Did you find that to be a challenge to write or was it something that just kind of poured out of you? Uh, I think it, it kind of just poured out. I remember one day just listening to the demo in my room and thinking to myself, like, well, what do I want to say? And then it just started flowing out. And the, I sometimes the way I write is kind of marinate in it. And then one day I'm like, I know what I want to say. And then I just crank it out like it, it just happens and I but I can't I can't force it it just has to happen <laughs> do you find yourself typically writing more about a like uh, specific experiences or more of like a like a medley of them like in the case of uh, shortcake I get really inspired by other people's experiences and listening to them speak about what they're going through whether that's friends or my brother or whoever and and then I pull from my own experiences. And I think that's the beauty of music is creating something that everyone can connect to and where it's simple enough to you can connect, but it's also complex enough to where you're like, wow, that's exactly how I feel. Yeah. So, and, and sometimes, yeah. you know, it's therapeutic too. Like sometimes I have to write this song to get through what I'm getting through, but that's kind of my process. Yeah. And I think that's a great point you make where it's so, sort of a misnomer in songwriting circles of like, or with fans that like a great song you had to have gone through it yourself, you know, for it to be a great song you wrote, but it doesn't always have to be the case. Some of the best songs are, you know, like what you, you do from time to time, it sounds like where you watch someone else's experience, internalize it, and then, and then tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. This, uh, this next one comes from uh, Sophia Neves. Uh, what is your favorite song right now? Other than your own music, is there anything you, you really love right now? Um, hmm. um, Caroline Polachek's song, Too Hot, You're Hurt So Hot, You're Hurting My Feelings. That's, is that what it's called? It's, yeah, it's her like main single off her most recent record. That song is so fun and I love the like concept of it, but she's awesome. I, I really look up to her as a writer and her new, I mean, I think it came out a year ago, but her most recent record is awesome. It's awesome. I like, uh, she does a, a Coors cover for Breathless. That's really good. I really like oh, that. I gotta check that out. Um, this next one 
comes from Joy Urea. What do your songs mean to you? Is there a story you can share about one of them? So just, I guess, in general, right? Like, you've touched on this a little bit, but what would you say your songs mean to you? Um, I, my songs, you know, I almost look at them. Now that I've been, you know, we haven't released something in a year. We're, we're about to have a new release in this upcoming month. But I almost look at them as, like, milestones in my life. Um, and it's really fun to hear them and be like, wow, like I've grown so much since that point in time. And, but I love that I captured that feeling in that moment, you know, um, and I can listen to it and know exactly how I felt and why I wrote that song. But then it's also a beautiful feeling of, okay, like, but look where I am now. And I overcame that, or I'm just as happy as I was then, or, um, yeah, but also just the memories too, like Fading with the Flowers, for example, the story behind that song. Um, I was visiting Chicago. We had a couple gigs out there. Um, the boy, a lot of the my bandmates are from Chicago, actually, uh, Charlie and Connor. And one night we were in, again, a basement. We were in Connor's basement, and it was like the first time we were all in Chicago, and I got to see their hometown, and um, – we kind of just wrote this song about like life and sometimes like parts of you are fading, but you're still breathing and you're still going to come out of it stronger and better. And just like the beauty of like parts of you that disintegrate with time, but then the, what the flowers that sprout out of, you know, those hard times and the new version of you that keeps on growing. Yeah. I love the visual of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, it's, it is cool that songs can be like timestamps like that, you know? Mm -hmm. we'll postcards in the past, if you will. Um, okay, this guy's name is entrt 4 einer uh, Do you have a mantra or a phrase that is important to you? Um, I really like, like, hmm, that's a good question. Give me a second. <laughs> I, I really, I believe in, you know, I, this is so funny. This week, I've been thinking a lot about what I stand for and like who I am. And I really believe like love is the basis of life and like love others as or treat. I know there's a Bible verse on it, like uh, love your neighbors as yourself. And, you know, whether you're um, spiritual or not, I just think that's a beautiful way to live life. And, you know, love is the one thing we all have in common. Love is the one thing that makes doesn't make sense, but it makes sense, you know, so um, yeah, I, I just think love others as you would love yourself or treat others how you want to be treated. And that's yeah. kind of what I live by. Just kindness. Wise advice. Mm -hmm. uh, this next question, Michelle. if you could only listen to one song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm. Oh my goodness. That's a tough one. It would have to be a No Doubt song. Wow. Okay. I know. I'm a super fan. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm trying to think. Um, dang. You know, they always ask me these questions, and, I, and then I get stumped. I'm like, I need to think about this for a day. <laughs> um, and well, what kind of No Doubt do you like? Because that's a band that's like quite eclectic. You could have like a Sunday morning or like an underneath it all, but then you could have like an ex-girlfriend. Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm crazy about It's My Life. That song goes so hard. The bass line in that song, oh my gosh. That's a good song. <laughs> but okay. I'll probably change my answer like in an hour. <laughs> I'm be like, why did I say that? <laughs> we'll take it now. Uh, all right, cool. We got one more question, and then uh, thanks for doing this again. Uh, this comes from at CF Familia Urea. What or who is your biggest inspiration? Oh no, there you are. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sure, sure. Uh, the question was, C.F. Familia, Urea, what or who is your biggest inspiration? Hmm. Don't get anyone angry. I know. <laughs> or jealous. Um, this sounds weird, but I, my brother, I'm so proud of him, and he has... I wouldn't be where I am today without him because he gave me a chance to write. And I don't know if he's my biggest inspiration, but he is definitely like 
my rock and someone that has encouraged me and pushed me to be better and encouraged me to do music and given me opportunities to do music and write for him and write with him and kind of like gave me confidence with and helped me grow as a writer. He's younger than me, but he also was like living in that world in the music industry a lot earlier than me. So I don't know if inspiration is the right word, but he's definitely like someone who pushes me and someone I look up to and I go to him when I need advice because I'm kind of new to this compared to where he is with his career. And um, yeah, so he's one of my inspirations in that sense. I don't know if that makes, if no, that for- totally answers the question, but um, yeah. And then like we talked about, like Gwen Stefani, Stevie Nicks, just the leading forces in music who just were like so powerful with their music and didn't let anyone stop them and, you know, you were captivated by these women at all times when they perform with their music on stage. And I, I aspire to be um, an artist who has that power and that presence. So those are some of my inspirations. Yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. Noah with uh, Gwen Stefani. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this again. Of course, Goody Bag the Band for those that are new. Uh, and Lindsay, you're just, you rule for doing this. And best of luck, uh, best of luck the rest of the semester and of course with the band. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We'll talk soon. Okay. Sounds good. See ya. Lindsay Urea, everybody. Uh, All right. That's all the time we have today. Uh, As they say, we're going to be on MTV in about two hours and 38 minutes. So wherever you are in the world watching this, two hours and 38 minutes from right now, the big show starts. And keep requesting uh, Lindsay on the MTV Friday live stream. I wonder if we can get a goodie bag video on there. That'd be very interesting. See goodie bag debut on MTV. That'd be cool. Um, Shout out to everyone who sent in questions. I got to as many as we could given the time and uh, have an awesome Friday if I don't see it, but I would love to see you uh, at 5 PM Eastern time over on MTV's YouTube. Until then, peace out.